Down the bitch gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're now on Red Circle instead of Podbean, also Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like and subscribe buttons also check out five reasons we do not have a paywall there and the great sponsors of the five reasons sports network you can play the world cup a lot of people have been doing that following our folks who've been making the picks over there but prize picks use the code five f-i-b-e get your deposit matched up to hundred dollars at prize picks again it's not rollovers they're literally giving you free money it gets matched download it from the google play store the app app store or prizepicks.com also check out our betting sponsor that's better edge b-e-t-t-o-r E-G-G-E.com. Use the code there, 5RSN. Peer-to-peer betting, like price picks. It's legal in the state of Florida. They don't come like with a bag of money or money orders at your door. Trust me, some of the other ones do if they give you money at all. BetterEdge.com. Get the line you want. Use the code 5RSN for $20 to play. And now from Tropical Distillers in Alapata, Miami, tonight's episode. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan, appropriately enough, because we're at Tropical Distillers. We've got Alex Salido. You can follow the Tropical. Like it. We've got Brady Hawk. You can follow the Brady Hawk 305. And for Miami Heat beat, you can follow the G Novice 103, John Carlo Novice. Miami Heat lose to the Boston Celtics tonight up in Boston. Boston played a near perfect offensive game. Miami made several runs against them. Every single run fell short ultimately, but it was a loose ball that they didn't get to. The 50 50 balls they didn't get to tonight. Jason Tatum going nuts, scoring nearly 50 tonight. Miami had good balance with Bam playing with five fouls. Ultimately, you're giving a lot of minutes to you, Donis Haslam, but the game against the best team in the league. No disrespect to UD, but that wasn't what they anticipated this season. No Jimmy Butler tonight. I don't like to be the moral victory king here. That's great. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, Greg, and Greg is on Hangover Time tonight, which is actually airing on our channel, so make sure you check that out with everybody for DP. But I felt like this was a little bit of a moral victory tonight. You're, you're playing against the best team in the league. They have been. They're historically good offensively. Not just good. Historically good. Brady and I have talked about it. It's the driving kick game and all the threes that they've got to. They shot 50% from three on extraordinarily high volume. And I'm talking about Boston. You had no Jimmy Butler in this game to slow the game down, get to the line. He had only nine free throw attempts. They made all of them. Boston was basically perfect from the line. And you had chances in this game. Like, I, I don't feel, I, people, I know people will say this is a bad result. I don't feel the process was bad. And I don't feel like you're as far away as I did before the game started. Yeah, I mean, look, the way that that game started with that onslaught of Celtics threes, just insane offensive production. I thought it was another five reasons to watch party first where everybody leaves here depressed because the game is just like a blowout or something like that. And honestly, I'm just glad it was my, It was a great game until the last couple of minutes where the Heat just completely, I don't know if you want to call it running out of gas, but they, they, they lost their composure. They were playing very tight, and I feel like they were executing really well. Um, and they withstood those crazy runs, right? The, the one in the first quarter uh, with all the threes, and then uh, in the second half, I believe there was another run. And uh, just the fact that you're able to withstand that game on the road without Jimmy, you know, with this roster, knowing what it is and how bad their offense is when Jimmy is out on the floor, like, honestly, I think it just matters that you were able to make it a close game. Uh, they could have won this game. That's the most frustrating part about it is that uh, it wasn't for the defensive mistakes. It wasn't for the off-ball mistakes. Uh, they honestly could have finished and won this game. That's... When you look at things to take out, um, a couple of things from the personnel standpoint. Uh, the first thing is the Heat looked for useful players during the course of the year. Like a lot of the first 30 games, as long as you don't fall too far out, it's finding guys who may be able to help you later. The Haywood Highsmith experiment has been extremely controversial on Twitter, <laughs> right? That's, just, that's, a, that's a low-key way to put it. But it's like this happens all the time. They're exposed to coach teams. Where there's a guy who's playing, 
and everybody is pissed that the guy is playing. And then he has a game or two, and you're like, well, that's why the guy is playing. Like, I feel like this is the, and I know Duncan Robinson, we've run the whole cycle here. It's a big, you know, at this point, it's a drama. It's, it's a dramedy. It's the whole thing. But, like, I feel like that was with Duncan. Like, he was, he was giving Duncan minutes early on when Duncan came up. And then it was like, why is he playing this guy? And he kept saying this is the best shooter in the league, in the world. And then you started to see some of it the next year. So let me ask you this. What is more promising to you? The fact that they, they have found maybe a guy in Hayward Eisman who can plug a hole for that period of time? Or the fact that we see Bam attacking guys off the dribble and playing like this now, even though he didn't have his big numbers this game. This is now what, the third or fourth consecutive game that has been impressive. Ethan, I think those go hand in hand. So tonight, I thought Miami was killing the Celtics off, which, you know, they were forcing help. Tyler Rock for a ton, which I think is something that we all like look forward to it, and I think that's a positive. So when guys are drawing, you know, they're helping off the table with Heisman. They're not helping off Max. They're not helping off Tyler. They're not helping off Duncan. So the fact that Hayward Heisman doing the game, these are NBA players at the end of the day, and they're going to knock down. They're going to, if they're get, they get enough open looks, they're going to knock them down. The fact that he gives you, we talked about it. When he gets a rebound, you feel it. He's jumping out of the gym. He plays really hard. He plays hard on defense. They got another. I mean, whether or not he's going to be a long-term NBA rotation player, but at least for this season, I don't think the minutes have been bad. I think that obviously you want Jimmy in that spot instead, but given their situation, I think that's encouraging. Bam attacking, I think, is a product of the shooting has improved because early in the season, even other than really funny enough, other than Jimmy and Deadman, right. shooting was down entirely. Max has picked it up a bit. Gabe hit a couple shots tonight, which you're going to need from him. Duncan hit a big three, so you get a little more shooting. You get some more downhill pressure. Tyler was able to get downhill. Kyle got downhill a couple times and just had the streak. And that's what you need from this group to kind of get a little bit on offense. It's been on 21 even. Not that the Celtics defense is what we're used to, but the fact that we worry that this team could score. And at least they put a little bit of that to rest. So let me ask you this, Brady. Um, you could sum up this thing as being as simple as Boston's best player played, played at an extraordinary level. And Miami's best player, again, didn't. He may play Friday. I've reported that this is an IT T band problem. Um, it's inflammation. It's soreness. They're trying to monitor it. They want to get his minutes down. I don't think they anticipate he will be out quite this long. It does not require surgery at this time. He could join the team on Friday. Which we is it as simple as that? And, and is there, you see a number like this from Tate, I mean, like, okay, they, what could they have done? Right? Because I sort of feel like if Jimmy played, I know Jimmy always starts on Jalen Brown, but I feel like there might have been a switch at some point where Jimmy got more looks against him, maybe they got out of zone, maybe they played more man to man. What could they have done defensively against Tatum? And I'll say first, it doesn't help. Like there's the, the Tatum aspect, but there's also the aspect that they shot like an incredible level from three in the field. Like it wasn't just Tatum, it was like the fact that Tatum had 49, and then they're also having that type of numbers on the kicks. So uh, schematically, what could they do? Like I said before this game, they were gonna have to try to match the offensive. There was no way this type of level of offense and you don't have Jimmy Butler, you don't have certain guys. And you're basically forced to play with certain lineups where it's like Tyler and Duncan. And these certain lineups that you don't really want to get to her, uh, as much as we talk about the Udonis thing, like there's still the element of him having to contain and drop against these high-level creators. So there's just so – like I can't be mad at what we saw today because I don't know what they could have done defensively. Like I, I don't think it was like that it was all on them because they did everything they could. They contested as much as they could. They did what they uh, – whatever they've been doing in zone that's led to them being a top three defense over the last two weeks – they did against tonight, and obviously it's just that you're playing these type of uh, players. But on the offensive end, they just basically took off on every run. Like they found a way to just kind of counter every Celtics run just by offense. So to your point, when you were talking about we kept having the offensive discussion, they kind of figured that out. Like where it wasn't one guy. I think it was seven guys in double figures. Like there was different runs where they just kept getting to different actions with different guys. So the offense is promising. I think the defense is still worrisome because – it's not that the fact that they couldn't stop them or that they were in zone. It's the fact that why are they in zone? They're in zone because they just miss the personnel. <laughs> like it's, they probably do go a little bit more to man if they have Jimmy and second of all, which I know it's a name we don't talk about a lot because we don't really expect much from Victor and Nico. I think they go back to a lot more man to man and kind of switching and drop when they have all deep at the point of attack or if they have all deep at the point of attack. So uh, I just can't be mad about this type of performance. I thought it was pretty promising, like you said, like even though they lost. Uh, this is the type of game. Yeah, I, I like that you mentioned um, some of the runs they went on because I, because I do think 
that it was different guys. Like we saw that Struess had a role, uh, Vincent had a role. And we're seeing now again with Struess, Vincent, and and uh, and Morgan, that you kind of know what to expect. Like Max is gonna have some variance in his shooting, but I think all three guys have made progress in different areas this year. I think all three guys are more playable than they were last season. But because we have G here, we're going to switch to somebody else because I, 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 want to, I want to make sure that I give him equal time here. Kyle Lowry has been better than him. Like, there, there's no other way around it. And, and even just watching him, it looks like the ridiculous number of minutes he's playing, which they did not want, which he did not want, okay, have actually got him into shape. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, he, he looks better That's to me. Free. Right now, it's the screen, but it's also, look, he's always going to be with quote unquote bad body time, okay? Like, Mario Chalmers was a bad body time. Real good. But like that, but now it just looks like Kyle's a bad body time. It doesn't look like he's obese, you know, and, and playing on the court. Like that, that, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I don't you know what I'm getting at? Like it, it, it looks like this has worked him into shape where the minutes have helped. He's got more of a sense of it. I thought he was good tonight. See, that's the whole thing. I'm sure Brady will break down the film, okay, and we'll take a look at what happened defensively, right? And it'll it'll be worse than we're talking about now because they did give up on 33 and there's a reason for all those open shots. But I also think that, like, I, I don't have a complaint about anybody who played tonight. Like, I thought Vincent was good. I thought Struess was good. I thought Bam was good. I thought Tyler was good. Udonis was, was fine. fine. Udonis was fine. My stiff was good. He fans may go this direction. They may say, well, everybody was good, and they lost anyway. Nobody was great. And nobody was great. Tatum was great. If Jimmy is great, does that turn the tide in this game? Absolutely. To the Kyle thing. Uh, he, I don't know if this is a, this is a, a bit of a deep cut. Reminds me of a tennis player, Stan Wawrinka. Like, the longer he plays, the better he gets. And I think Kyle has pretty historically, the later you get into a season, we saw it last season, right? After All-Star break, he was a different dude. And I think he's a bit of a locomotive. He starts off a little slow. Last year, he was shooting in the 20s from three. This year, that's not been a question. He's been around 35%, 37% pretty much all year. So to, to your point, I think the higher minute total, probably not great, but has gone him into, I guess, a quicker basketball group. I think he's getting downhill really well. I think the passing, I think we all know what he gives us as a, as a creator. I think a lot of people ask, what is Gabe Vince? What is Calvin better than Gabe Vince? I think decision made, and I think we've seen the way that he gets tempo up, he gets him, the rebounding go, I think is important. So kind of all those elements that he gives with, yeah, even, I mean, from him down to Giannis, I think that you can't ask for much more. They ran a lot of drop, which I do think Bam has historically struggled with. You know, they drop Horford really deep, and then the corner man kind of edges in. That's what Boston does ever since the bubble, and it's worked pretty well against Bam. Uh, I thought Bam had a really good game in spite of that. You know, he was getting behind the defense a ton. He had some tough finishes, but that's what you're going to expect from him. And you need your guards to hit shots, and they did. Offense was not a problem today. They got production everywhere from offense, and the defense, as Brady said, kind of is what it is with their personnel. With Jimmy back, you know, obviously Caleb not playing late minutes, he helps a lot at the point of attack as well. So I'm sure that if Jimmy comes back, and by the way, to win two games in a row on the road, like that's tough. A team can go into your house and it, you, you know, you give a, a coach like Eric Spolstra a lot of film and, and preparation time. I, I have a feeling that they're going to change a couple things defensively, and it's going to be interesting to see. That's why I thought this was just such an important set for them because it is a mini playoff set early in the season against the best team in the league so far this season. So, and a rival. And a rival. And so they will get a sense for that intensity. We saw that Tyler over the past couple of years has shrunk on the road in tough environments. He did not tonight. It looked like he was feeding off of it. I didn't think Max was bothered by it. I know people are going to say we're too positive after the double digit, but it was essentially a double digit loss tonight. It didn't feel like a double digit loss. It felt like they hung in. They still got to get some of these games. They need to go for a Right. Exactly. They need to take 50 from 10. All right, we're going to get to one thing I want to talk to while we have G here. I'm going to go to all three of these guys and some of the heat pieces start to come back. Before I do, I want to mention our product code again. It's 5RSN. That's number 5RSN. Use that code at manscaped.com for 20% off all your grooming products. That's the cologne. That's the razors, uh, deodorant, and much more. They also give you lots of free stuff. Use the code 5RSN. Number 5RSN. Manscaped for 20% off. And for all your premium CBD, go to therapistpreferred.com. Use the code 5RSN for 25% off the tincture, the sports cream, the gummies. They got a new sports cream there as well for recovery from sleep. So 5RSN is the product code for Manscaped and for Derek's preferred. And we want to thank our sponsor, Eric Rubenstein, for coming out here today as well. Check out ericrubenstein.com if you're looking for a personal injury attorney.
let's project over because it's clear that it's close. Jimmy is on the men and on the way back to see for how long. But Vic is also. Okay, and I've been recording for a while. It was weeks, not months. Uh, they are basically holding him right now. Okay, and again, this is more of a pain management issue. It's to the other leg, uh, not the one that he injured the quad on. But we may see both of them together. The heat of this been talking about being hurt. When you watch a game like tonight and you plug Jimmy and Vic, how much different does this look with both of them? Where, where are they heading? Well, look, we saw a preview of what that could look like in the conference finals. Obviously, there's some differences. We talked about Robert Williams playing tonight, how much of a difference that's made towards the loss of defense. Um, I just think having Jimmy and Vic would have used a lot of play creation, right? There are a lot of shot creation that they could have used tonight. And not that, you know, offense was necessarily the problem. You drop 120 points on the road against Boston. You know, which last season was being touted as the greatest defense of all time, now they're the greatest offense of all time. Win a title first. No, but seriously. <laughs> uh, I, I do think... Uh, I well, they came close. So. No, not close enough. <laughs> <laughs> they were healthy. At least they were healthy in their final uh, But no, seriously, Jimmy and Vic at the point of attack, just on defense in general, on offense, like I said, a lot of shot range, a lot more rim pressure, which the Heat, or it's just another season doing their thing in the bottom 10 in rim pressure. So... Yeah, I guess a team like Boston, it's not like they allow a lot of room attempts anyway, but absolutely could have used Jimmy and, and, and all the people in these games. I think all the people probably would have taken away whatever been is Duncan play. Probably um, a with Highsmith doesn't play as much as you know, you know the different positions, but just trying to imagine who they take away the minutes from in a rotation, you know, smoke is a fine, playing small. I think those guys could have been helpful, but regardless, like I'm talking about how they could help on offense more. Like with how much they were able to create on offense tonight. That's really like my biggest thing is you know the way they were able to get stuff out of Tyler Van Pickerel, Kyle Van Pickerel. It's not surprising, but it was just nice to see it's comforting when you see them get um, easy looks over and over. The offense, I think, you know, had a couple of times where it got a little stagnant. But you know, they didn't get destroyed in any quarter, they didn't have a quarter where they got um, beaten by twenty five or anything like that. I just think they kept it together all game and were able to execute on both ends. And, it's just kind of not surprising for me. Me team knows how to play with you know, adversity, especially in a game where they're expected to lose. They really turn it up. So yeah, Jimmy and Vic would have helped, but honestly, they could have won tonight. We talked a lot about the man. Obviously, uh, I think the Tyler this is just as important. Another four game where he didn't have a triple double tonight. It was close in both categories. There seems to be a comfort level that's developing. There was even like a moment of levity between the Lowry team. I look for those, okay, <laughs> because that has been kind of a, a, weird, weird, a weird connection at times. It just looks like it's not the best fit. Uh, but it looked like the two of them were kind of connecting. I, I, I just feel like them having to span a million fan Tyler pick and rolls and Tyler having to handle some of these situations without Jim. If this season turns around without him, okay, if they go on a run, the move obviously changed the trajectory potentially one. I do think we'll look at this period and the fact that they got these reps, provided again that they can make it work. The Jimmy slide, right? But I do feel like this Tyler, since he's come back and gotten healthy, this is meaningful. So something I mentioned on my podcast was the, the role players have reversed. Max, Gabe, Duncan, you know, Edmund, all these guys have not shot the ball and not played as well. Have they regressed or have they been asked to do more than maybe last so year? So it's weighing. Yeah, that's part of it. So, like, regardless, the ultimate outcome is these guys are not producing to the level that they were last year, where they'd go on the road against Phoenix and, and absolutely destroy them. So, if that's going to be the case, what you need is somebody at the top to get better. Jimmy is Jimmy. Bam being a better player absolutely elevates your ceiling. And then the next phase of that is Tyler, which, and, and Brady, I'm sure that you've seen this as well. I think throughout his career, he's been a guy that sees and play a second late. And I think this season, when that help steps up, he is getting rid of the ball on time. And at times, at least the last game, and even to this game a little bit, he'll run, a, he'll run an action, and he'll take a half little dribble. And this is a little bit of Kyle in him. He kind of takes a half second, that change of pace. He draws the defender to jump, and then he baits that. That's the difference between manipulating a defense and giving what the defense takes. You. And that step is enormous for them, for their potential, for him. If they get better... It's going to be on him and Bam getting better. Because I think depending on Jimmy and Kyle, I mean, I think Kyle's probably been about as much as you can expect giving his age. And to ask Jimmy to do any more than he has is, is 
absurd. So you're going to need your two young, like your two young partners, though, that you have committed max salaries, or close to max salaries to, to have grouped up. Because you cannot, you can't be asking Max and Gabe and Duncan and Desmond and these guys, hey, make this championship good. That has to come from the top. All right, I only got one more here because I have a feeling that Ben is buying the entire store. So we're going to. What's in that, Ben? That's tropical distiller stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. That's right. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close. Like, well, you can't give it to Brady. That's oh, that. Citrus Dak. <laughs> even that <laughs> Citrus Dak. We got me through that second quarter. Uh, we do want to mention before we leave here tonight. It's a great spot. We'll probably do more watch parties from here. Tropical Distillers in Alabama. A very hospitable tonight. We had our guy Mercy here tonight, who does the theme song for Five on the Floor. He was here tonight. If you know the DJ Marcus Schultz here in Miami. He was here tonight hanging out with us. Uh, we had a good crowd with the four of these uh, in the future. But, Brady, just to close here, give me the prescription for Friday night. Is it just Jimmy plays? Or if Jimmy doesn't play well? Yeah, it's t- I, I, think it, I think it pretty much is Jimmy plays because I don't know if you can do more than you did tonight. Uh, the only difference is maybe there is an adjustment defensively where Tatum doesn't score 49 because I, I think there's, uh, there's a part of this where you can – kind of withhold the fact that they shoot like a crazy number from three or from two because they've done that all season. They've lost doing that. Um, but it's tough because I said, we talked about it on yesterday's podcast when we were talking about the game. We were talking kind of in the context of when they didn't have Jalen Brown because he was out. Him playing changes everything because we know what Miami can do against a team that has one single guy. They'll just blitz him like no right. other. They'll force four on threes on the opposite side and they'll bet on that. You cannot do that when Jalen Brown's playing. And you can't do that when you're having to play zone because there's no guy to guard Jalen Brown. There's no big Joel Adipo who had like forced him into seven turnovers in the one game of posting. So there's just a lot to change there with the Jalen Brown factor. So the counter is the Jimmy Butler factor. Uh, but I'm interested in what they do because something I talked about that they could do defensively in this game that I didn't really see them get to, I guess, too much because they were focusing on the zone uh, is what they did in the Suns game where they pretty much – uh, it's different because if they had Chris Paul, could they do the same thing? This is the Jalen Brown, Jason, Jason Tatum conversation. But where you just basically you're you're going to blitz the Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown type, but you're going to drop on the Marcus Smarts and the Derek Whites and those types. But the issue is that tonight, like those guys were hitting too. So it's just a, it's a hard dynamic because this team isn't the Suns. Like this Celtics team is playing at a very high level right now. So it's more of like adjustments throughout a game. I don't think this is a game plan thing. You're heading into a game. Plan do one thing because you don't know what that game is going to be. Maybe it's only other game. So, uh, but some of the positives, like you were talking about before offensively, uh, I thought Tyler was really good. So you talked about his four game. I thought there was plays where they were spamming the Tyler fan pick and roll in that moment. Like they were just going to that and Haywood Highsmith got like three threes off of that action because they were having to pinch down off Haywood. That's the shot you want if you're Boston and he was hitting. You have the Max Struess factor in the third quarter. Uh, what was it? 17 points and five threes, like in a very short span. They were just spamming uh, because Orford's sitting in that deep drop. They liked what they got there, so they got him off handles, got him off pick and rolls. Bam, in isolation. I think every single one of his points, I have, not every one, because I'm sure he got some other Almost most of his shots were self-created. Like, he was going off isolations, transition, and all that type of stuff. Uh, so there was a lot of good things individually that you'd like to see, but it's still, it's, it, it's more about this two-game set and how they're going to adjust. And, and like we just started this off, Jimmy Butler's going to be the biggest factor. The other takeaway from tonight before we close is now the Rockets going to be a huge problem. Like that, right? There's no question. Like try to tell them. The the upgrade there to Malcolm Brogdon, uh, because you talk about what they did to to Phoenix. Malcolm Brogdon kept getting into the teeth of the defense and making that floor. That's (laughs) that's a problem. He could do that. He could do that. He is right. (laughs) No, he's not. Malcolm Brogdon. That's what we learned tonight. He could have used Jimmy Butler, and Malcolm Brogdon is not Cameron Payne. All right, we also learned Drop of the Slew is a great place to host a watch party. Uh, thanks to G here for stepping in here, John Connor Novice, to Brady, to Alex, and everybody. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check over at the link. You'll see Greg tonight. He's on with Al for the group. I'm going to hang over time tonight. And that's our plane. That's our plane. They're coming. No, I think I sunshine pump tonight. It, it, you think you sunshine? Imagine what, imagine what they should Oh, and Leif. Imagine Leif. 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 They won the championship tonight. He did. And he played well, and they got laid. That's yeah, oh, good. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.